Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to be talking about this the movie called The Net. It came out in 1995. I can't believe I'm saying that it almost came out 30 years ago. But um, it stars Sandra Bullock and Jeremy Northam. And it's an action thriller about a young woman whose life gets turned around after her friend gives her this mysterious disc that played a role in the death of someone who was very well known in the news. And the reason I want to talk about this movie is be not necessarily going to be a review, but it reminded me a lot of what goes on nowadays with the internet. And in a way, it was prophetic. Um, it foreshadowed what we have to deal with now. And back then, people may not have even thought or did not, weren't even thinking about the possible repercussions of internet use and privacy and security while navigating the internet. And this movie came out long before social media existed the way it does now, um, before Wi-Fi was created. Um, this is before, um, they may have had laptops in 1995, I'm not entirely sure, but they were probably like the size of car batteries, so, um, <laughs> just like the phone, the cell phones, and, um, it, this is before touch screens and, you know, all of that, but, so this is when the tech culture was really, like, in its infant stages, so being a geek or being tech savvy or being considered a nerd was still kind of looked down upon. It's not um, pop culture or trendy like it is now to say that you're a techie or that you're tech savvy. So it was still considered like a negative stereotype or it was a bad thing to be into computers and technology back then. So just to show you how things change over time. And what this movie does, or what I, when I watched it again recently, what it showed me was the potential pitfalls of internet use back then. And it even shows the pitfalls that a person can fall into today, or some of the dangers that come with, or some of the potential risks that come with using the internet, I'd rather say. Not necessarily, um, I'll just leave it at that because I just lost my thought about it. But, um, <laughs> so the premise of this movie, it's almost, it, it reminds me of an Olympic swimmer. And for those of you that watch the Olympics or you watch, people do swim meets or swim races on TV or on the internet. These swimmers move through that water like a hot knife through butter. They navigate the water so well. And I feel like people that are tech savvy, they can get around firewalls, they can hack your information, they can break security measures or they can shut down security measures to get the information that they need. So I'm actually, I'm referring to hackers and people that use their skills for nefarious means. Um, they are like that Olympic swimmer because they can navigate the internet and software so quick, easily, like it's nothing. And so, unfortunately, people, some people, not all, with that capability choose to use their gift for the wrong thing and you see that in this movie and unfortunately at the same time that people have become more and more capable of doing such things online more people spend their life online so with this increase in traffic on the internet there is an increase of scams, there's an increase of phishing, identi identity theft, 
and things of that nature. And I think all of us have had to empty our junk folder in our emails almost every week. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of junk emails. And it's just a bunch of stuff that's designed to pull you in so they can get what they want out of you. And unfortunately, some people have been victims of identity theft. They have been uh, victims of phishing. They have been victims of scanning. They've had their accounts compromised. They've had to shut down their bank account. They've had to freeze their assets and all of that. Um, Some people have had to fight to get charges off of their credit card or their debit card. I've had to deal with that personally, and it's such an inconvenience. And I know sometimes, and for some people, they get scammed out of thousands, if not millions of dollars at some times. If um, you ever watch those crime shows, there's some people that invest in a company that they think is real, and they get the email online, and they never see their money again. And they've just made a person a millionaire, or several people millionaires or they've just made them considerably more wealthy than they were before because they got tricked and this movie doesn't really touch on that but it does touch on something that has become a big issue in today's society and it deals with online harassment and bullying and misinformation and misinformation is a word that we all know now and it's because it get it happens all the time on so many different subjects and it's hard to keep up with what is truth and what is false and in this movie they <clears throat> the uh, bad guys use misinformation to ruin someone's life and because this person feels helpless and like it's beyond their control they end up taking their own life and they take their own life in the beginning of the movie and then later on in the movie Sandra Bullock's character she has two friends that try to help her or they try to warn her so one friend is driving a plane he's in a single engine plane and he's on his way to see her and the bad guys somehow they're able to get access to the navigation systems in his plane and he ends up crashing and killing himself and so he's not able to warn her or get to her in time to tell her that there's people after her because of that disc he sent her And then later on in the movie, she has another friend that decided to help her. He heard her out about her identity getting stolen and there's people messing with her life and he decides he's going to help her. So they decide to go out to get something to eat and there's something in it that he's allergic to. So I am probably remembering this part of the movie wrong And if you decide to watch it, I think it's still on Netflix at this point, but if you decide to go and watch this movie, I think they, the the restaurant that they go to puts peanuts in their food, even though he specifically instructed that they not do it. And that happens because the bad guys changed up their order. And so as a result, because he has an, he goes into anaphylactic shock, he has to go to the hospital so when they get to the hospital you see the bad guys they're not there physically but they are remotely changing his health record information and it says do not give him penicillin because he's allergic and he can't tell them that because he's unconscious so what the bad guy does is they change it from him being allergic to penicillin to him being diabetic and unfortunately they end up giving him penicillin and he ends up dying 
and it happens in a very short period of time. His friend Angela walks out of the room, goes and does something for about 10 or 15 minutes, and when she comes back, they tell her that he died. And of course, she's shocked because um, they tell her, we gave him penicillin, we tried to revive him, but there was nothing we can do. And she tells them he was allergic to penicillin. And they say, you know, we looked at his health records. It says here that he's diabetic, not that he's allergic to penicillin. And they say, all they can say is that they're sorry, and they just move on. So I don't know if this is actually possible to manipulate someone's health record information like that. Even in a um, closed circuit of... Um, information systems I don't know if that's I don't know if that's possible unless you're actually there to do it yourself from within the network of computers at the hospital so even at that fact even if it's fiction the idea that someone could do it if it were possible someone could do it or would want to do it that is very scary because imagine that you do go to the hospital and there's something that you're deathly allergic to and someone decides to change that and there's no proof that they changed it. Or you go to get treated for something and then in between you being taken in and you getting the actual treatment, they decide to change what you're there for. So this is a, it's a bit of an extreme case and I think it was exaggerated for the sake of the movie, but I still understand where they were coming from when it comes to the possibilities or the dangers with in the internet and people being smart and clever enough to know how to navigate it to their advantage. And so what this leads me into next is with the scamming and the phishing and the identity theft you have companies like Norton Security, McAfee, you have AVG, you have NordVPN, you have ExpressVPN and people get this technology so that they feel safer navigating the internet to prevent you know their identity from being stolen or their um, information being compromised. So in the movie the bad guys create some technology that is seemingly harmless on the surface and they sell it to the government and it's actually a Trojan horse for a program that allows them to access sensitive information in the FBI, the CIA, and the Pentagon databases. And that's why they're able to change up their friends navigation systems they're able to change up her friend's health record information they're able to say that she's a criminal and that she killed somebody it's the movie gets a little ridiculous it gets a little crazy with what they're able to do and i'd have to dig a little deeper to see if someone is actually capable of doing those things so um the fact that they're able to use it as a Trojan horse, that actually happens. And unfortunately, when that does happen, it doesn't just affect one person. It affects a lot of people when it does happen. And I think it did happen recently where a pipeline got shut down because somebody hacked the informa the, the um, computer systems and they... Um, got money out of it they bribed the government and got money out of hacking it i i think that was a story a couple of months ago and i could be wrong but i think it is possible not as precise as changing someone's health record information but it could be you know an electrical company that ha handles all their stuff electronically or on the internet or with a computer system or um something else it could have to that could have to do with municipalities in the city and that could be dangerous too like imagine someone messing with the traffic systems and messing with the the stoplights and the and the um the train the train warnings you know lifting the signals and uh, lifting the, the arms 
on the train tracks and there's a train barreling to down the tracks at 90 miles an hour and they're saying it's safe to go so that is dan it's dangerous for one or several people to have that kind of power and I'm not trying to scare anybody <laughs> I hope I'm not scaring anybody but um, yeah this movie really just like it really set my mind down a rabbit hole and I've just really been like thinking about this all this time since I last saw it and just going back to misinformation that's very serious and sometimes we don't understand the repercussions of misinformation or lying about somebody or slandering someone or dragging their name through the mud or the repercussions of doing so I would feel horrible if I found out that I because of what I said about someone simply because I don't like them or I don't like what they said I don't like what they stand for whatever the reason may be and I decide to go f far I decide to go so far with my negative feelings toward this person that I ruin their life and they feel like they no longer have the will to live I can't imagine what that would feel like if I was the direct cause of someone feeling that way and that that kind of behavior needs to stop and I know it um, it's just me I mean what what can one person do to you know versus thousands of people that do this online and have no conscience about doing it but if enough people just start speaking up when they see it and help holding people accountable when they do it and they're actually being repercussions and consequences for spreading misinformation then maybe it wouldn't happen so often and unfortunately misinformation is rampant nowadays it's anybody can start a web page anybody can start a forum on reddit anyone can start it, the, the conversation on YouTube on Instagram Facebook anyone can just put some random false statement out there about somebody and have no proof that it's true and people will believe it or they'll start doing research on it and it's it almost reminds me of the game telephone and the with telephone the objective is to make sure that the original message stays as close to the truth or the original statement as possible and every time I played telephone the message that was originally put out there is totally different by the time it gets back to that person and it's the same thing with misinformation on the internet one person can say something and when it changes so many hands by the time it comes back to that person it is not the same statement and so from that false information people start forming different opinions of this person their perception of this person changes they may have once respected them and then they lose respect for that person they may have looked up to this person and now they don't and it's all based on a lie so when this happens it's so important not to develop that mob mentality that tends to happen a lot nowadays someone and it rem that reminds me of the Blair Witch Trials of the 17th century. So when one person cried witch, everybody else just believed that person. And it, it was based on fear. It was based on paranoia. It was based on superstition and uh, suspicion of neighbor. And they had no proof that these women were witches they were simply different or what have you 
and that tends to happen on the internet one person says something about somebody and it may not be true and then you'll have several other people jump on the bandwagon and before you know it there's a hashtag trending about this person and that's the, <laughs> the attitude is I don't know why this person is trending but I'm going along with it and people don't see how moronic that is and it, it just blows my mind that people are so easily manipulated by the things that they see and I it just comes down to individual effort you have to be very careful that you don't let your emotions get you whipped up and pulled into something that is meaningless and empty and it's just going to end up hurting somebody really badly in the end and it may cause irreversible damage to this person's life so you just got to ask yourself if everyone was saying to jump off a bridge would you do it too just because they told you to I mean, just to fit in or to not look different or so that they won't come after you. You're going to jump off the bridge. You're going to do something stupid simply because everybody else is. So when you the next time you hear something about somebody and it sounds off or it sounds odd, maybe the best thing to do rather than just going along with it, do your research. Just, do, just, it's not going to, everybody has a cell phone. Everybody, almost everyone has a tablet. Well, not everyone has a cell phone, but everyone can find a way to access the internet. Whether it's a handheld computer or it's your tablet or it's your laptop or you use somebody else's phone. It, information is so easy to access now. You can do a simple search and find out the truth yourself you could find out which source of information is reliable and and which one has a track record of being sketchy you don't have to take everything at face value or just because the majority of people say that this is what it is does not mean that it's the truth a, a whole lot of people can be wrong about the same thing just because a majority are saying that this is right doesn't mean that it's right so when it comes to misinformation about somebody even on a smaller scale it doesn't have to be an actor or an actress or a celebrity that you like or somebody that you look up to it could be a friend or someone you would want to be friends with or someone in your family that you may not necessarily know that well or something happened between a family member and someone else just consider the facts or look at the facts or try to find out what's really going on before you decide to take one action or another and that will save you from a from making a potentially big mistake and it's better to think as an individual and make your choices based on the conclusions that you come to rather than based on the collusions of someone else because they can always be wrong so it's just important to stay true to yourself and to always seek the truth no matter how you feel so that's gonna do it for this video and I just wanna thank you guys for listening it's almost this video is almost 25 minutes long it's probably the longest I've ever talked but I do think my Mass Effect video was longer than this one but I just want to thank you guys for stopping by make sure you share it make sure you like it subscribe if you're new to my channel I will be talking more about um, subjects having to do with the internet and being online and social media and all of that there's going to be a ton of videos about that actually i just feel like there's so much to be said about it because so much has changed in the last 10 or 15 years concerning social media and it's a constantly changing situation and 
studies are coming out about it, like the, the positives of it, the negatives of it. Social media is new to a lot of people. It's new to all of us because it's not like people had handheld computers, cell phones 50 years ago or 60 years ago. So we're just now starting to turn the corner on the effects of using social media. And there's some pretty interesting studies that are have been coming out lately. And I'll get into that a little bit more in a future video. But for now, I will leave you guys with that. And make sure you drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, the intention of my video is just to get to get the conversation started and to open up dialogue about you know internet use and misinformation and doxing and bullying and all of that so i'd appreciate it if you guys you know supported my channel by doing that i'm not asking for any money or anything by any means i just really would i i would love to hear from you guys so please do leave a comment and take care and be careful and be safe and i'll see you guys later